Cinco de Mayo, let's go! So tonight, we celebrate... <laughs> you know the roof on fire. We go boogie, hoogie, hoogie, jiggle, wiggle, and dance <laughs> like the roof on fire. We go drink, drink, and take shots until we fall out like the roof on fire. Now, baby, get my booty naked, take off all your clothes and light the roof on fire. Tell them, tell them, baby, 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 baby,
fire at all. Yeah, a uh, good morning in that. It's Uncle Lou here. That's right, it's me, Uncle Lou, live for you on YouTube today. Thanks for watching, man. <sighs> sure to appreciate it also. And two, happy Cinco de Mayo, Mexican Independence Day. I think happy Cinco de Mayo. Uh, what'd y'all do? Uh, we usually go out to eat on Cinco de Mayo. Uh, of course, we didn't do that this year. Stayed in, uh, but we still, uh, you know, we made tacos and rice and beans. And uh, what are those? Uh, I don't know. Is this Mexican? I think it is. I don't know. Uh, you know how you take a bell pepper and you stuff it full of hamburger meat with cheese and rice and that? We had that. Uh, so anyway, we did the best we could under the circumstances that we find ourselves in. That's right. Uh, Notre Dame looking to do the best they can in the circumstances that they might find themselves in, also in two. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, big interview with Notre Dame's uh, athletic director uh, earlier today. His thoughts on the coronavirus, the 2020 college football season. Uh what if the Power Five conferences decide to play conference-only games? Where would that leave Notre Dame? I'll let you know what he said uh, here in just a second on uh, on that. Uh, some of it uh, is interesting. Some of it you're like, uh, yeah, uh, we can smell that BS a mile away. Uh, and you'll be able to figure out what it is when we talk about that here in a second. Shout out to everybody for tuning in tonight. I hope you all had a safe uh, and fun uh, Cinco de Mayo today. Real USC, what's up, buddy? RG Gannon, TR Sports, Melissa May, Alan V, Highlight Lemonade, RB Smata, Clem and Son, which I still think is two people. Jeff Webster, Billy Cole, MVPS, Randall Anderson, Mr. Anderson. 
Good morning. Uh, Neelan Steak. Is that what that says? I think that says Neelan Steak. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Big Ken, the weatherman, TikTok guy, Chess Hall, uh, who is TikTok famous, by the way, if you're one of those TikTok type people. TikTok type 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 no tiktok type of people check him out snake spence what's up buddy north florida uh los padres happy cinco de mayo buddy hola yeah chalupa and uh ariba la rasa too good to see you here uh andrew gator boy 15 james gentry jeff webster rattlehead uh, appreciate all of y'all tuning in this evening, yeah, there is some Notre Dame news. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, if you tuned into the morning show this morning, we gave a T-shirt away. We're going to do the same thing tonight. What's good for the goose? Good for the gander. So we'll give a T-shirt away again tonight. We're going to do it the same way we did it uh, this morning. So we do have the Super Chats. Feel free to use them if you want. The giveaway is going to be done on PayPal, though. There's the link. I just put it in the chat section. Plus, the link to the PayPal is also posted on uh, in the description uh five dollars gets you entered in if, if you want a t-shirt no one ever has to donate we do this i don't know how, what, what do we do this once a month or so we give the shirts away so we're going to do it again uh did it this morning we'll do it again tonight uh that way we meet our quota for may uh yeah that's right I have to do that uh yeah uh, my boss is a uh, is real hard ass got to meet these quotas anyway so we'll do it on the uh, paypal page it works the same way we've always done it uh if you haven't been here for a giveaway before uh, every five dollars will get you entered in we'll uh pick a winner at the end of the show somebody win a t-shirt whichever one they want if you win and you don't want a loot tube shirt or you're, you already have them all or whatever the case is or you just rather would have whatever i say yeah, i'll send you a, whatever you want a shirt from uh your favorite team uh whatever the case is but uh free t-shirt to the winner tonight uh every five dollars gets you an entry uh, uh that's on the paypal page uh we had some confusion on that this morning uh, that's on the PayPal page. Feel free to use Super Chats if you want to. I know it's a lot easier and more convenient, but in terms of the giveaway, that's going to be on the PayPal. It is what it is. Uh, anyway, uh, this is Uncle Lou After Dark, YouTube's longest-running college football call-in show. Uh, I get it. A lot of you hate me and can't stand me. That's fine. A lot of you have this on mute right now, and you're just here for the comment section. That's fine, too. Uh, plenty of other YouTubers out there, uh, but none of them in, have been doing it as long as I've been doing it. They're all better than me, clearly, uh, but I have been doing it the longest. My only claim to fame, uh, so I stick my stake in the ground. This is YouTube's longest-running college football call-in show. We do it every Tuesday and Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for joining. Don't forget the morning show. Me and BVD co-host that show four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. That's at 8 a.m. Don't you want to call in? Of course you do. Of course you do. Whoopity-doo! Whoopity-doo! <laughs> Yeah, give me a call, 706-786-4481 is the number. We'll talk about whatever it is you want to uh, talk about. Uh, we've got several people on hold already, it looks like, so we'll get to the phone calls in just one second. Let me give you the gist real quick of what the uh, athletic director from Notre Dame said, then we'll take some calls, then we'll talk more about Notre Dame uh, if we get a chance. Uh, he was asked all the same questions everyone else has asked. Are we going to play football? When's it going to be? What would be, you know, be fans there? Yada, yada, yada. Same answers we've heard everyone else say. Okay, so no news there. Uh, you know, they, he hopes to he hopes to play a regular season just like we're supposed to with fans. But yada yada, we know that that's what everyone hopes. Uh, but they asked him. They said, uh, you know, all these other conferences are talking about, you know, if they have to shorten the season or uh, whatever the case, they may play conference only schedules and do away with non con games. Uh, what what would you know? What is Notre Dame going to do in the event that happens? You know, oh, uh, clearly, you know, we don't want that to happen. But uh, he he said he's convinced. He's convinced. The athletic director of Notre Dame is convinced that if the Power Five teams decide to go to a conference-only schedule, uh, which 10 of Notre Dame's 12 opponents uh, are Power Five conference opponents, so uh, that would be 10 of their games would be out the window, um, he's confident that if that happens, Notre Dame will be able to fill in those 10 games with quality opponents. Quality opponents. Like who? Now, there are four or five, maybe, right? Maybe, maybe you get a Central Florida, a Boise State, a Cincinnati, uh, a Memphis, SMU, whatever. The, the, you know, the, 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 the group of five teams that were decent last year, maybe you schedule them up or something some kind of way. But how do you do that if 
if the if the if the group of five schools decide to do the same thing the power five does right play play conference only so i don't know then then the real idea surfaced the real idea surfaced he said you know now, I, I'm not concerned about Notre Dame. Keep in mind, this is the athletic director of Notre Dame. I'm not concerned about Notre Dame. I, 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 I'm, I'm concerned about, you know, you know the, the traditions and the integrity of college football. I, I don't want to miss out on these games that, that as fans of college football, we love seeing every year. And then he specifically mentioned Clemson and South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, everybody can't wait to catch that beating this year. Uh, but anyway, his point was he wants the Power Five, if they decide to do a shortened season and play conference games only, he wants the Power Five to go to a conference plus one system so that we can res- uh, preserve the tradition of Clemson and South Carolina. Now, that's BS. He wants the Power Five conferences to go to a conference schedule plus one so that that plus one for a lot of teams can be Notre Dame. That's what he wants to. That's why he doesn't care about Clemson and South Carolina. Notre Dame, join a conference. I, I've been saying it forever, uh, long before I had a YouTube channel. Notre Dame is never going to join a conference in football until something really, really bad happens to them. And the sole reason it happens is because they're not in a conference. Until that happens, they're not going to join one. And the, the most obvious example before coronavirus was what if Notre Dame goes 12-0 and one year or even 11-1 and and gets left out of the college football playoff because they don't have that 13th game? Th- then that might push them into a conference. But not being able to play any Power 5 teams because you're not in a conference, that might push them that direction too. So I don't know, but the good people over at Notre Dame, they don't care about that though. They're not concerned about Notre Dame. They only care – about the rich tradition like Clemson versus South Carolina. It's very important to the Notre Dame athletic director that we get to see Clemson versus South Carolina this year. That's what he wants you to know. So, anyway, let's get to the phone call, see what you guys have to say uh, today. Uh, yeah, good morning, Annette, but you're on. Hey, good morning, Uncle Lou. J. Doug calling from virus-infected Perry, Iowa. Perry, Iowa is virus-infected, you say. That is alarming, to say the least. Yeah. We just uh, we just made the lead story on a couple of the uh, nightly national news shows. MSNBC had us on. Fox had us on. Uh, this is a town of 7,500 people, 25 miles northwest of Des Moines. Uh-huh. And the largest employer is Tyson Meatpacking uh, Plant okay. that employs, it employs, it employs 1,250 people. 730, 58%. Was result that was the result that came out today. That's that's positive. That's that's almost a tenth of the population of the city. Seven hundred and thirty yeah. out of twelve hundred and fifty. Yeah, makes so sense. We're right so in now. the middle of it. Yeah, I've heard. Uh, I have heard a lot on the news lately about these meat plants um, having a hard time with it. So uh, yeah, that's a shame. They say the meat shortage is coming. I don't know what to believe anymore. I mean, hell, the here the shortage has been here so i i don't know what the, what's going to be different but they say uh yeah these food plants are getting hit pretty hard so uh that's a shame there but uh yeah so let's see 1200 people in a plant and 750 got them uh okay so now a hundred thousand people in a stadium uh that works out to about sixty thousand people getting it alarming Notre Dame better join a conference. Not, uh, not, not exactly a happy time here. Everybody in uh, naturally, everybody in town is absolutely freaking out. But hey, I don't want to spend all the time on the COVID. I I wanted to hop in on the Notre Dame thing. Yeah. I, I don't know. You've you talked about Notre Dame quite a bit in the past, but I don't know that you've ever really nailed down where you think they should go. I think when you look at geography, you look. This is very important for Notre Dame, and it's important for the other schools in the conference. When you look at it academically. I don't understand why Notre Dame is not in the Big Ten. I mean, that, yeah. that is the fit for them. I, the ACC is ridiculous. They're not even close to it, and they don't have anything in common with those schools. But the Big Ten, I mean, Notre Dame is, is perfect for the Big Ten. Uh, I don't care too much about geography. Um, I mean, these teams are going to hop a plane, whether they're going 100 miles or 1,000 miles. It doesn't matter. They're going to hop a plane either way these days. So I don't care so much about geography, but when you're looking at Notre Dame and, you know, who they have traditionally played, uh, the Big Ten makes the most sense. And just so happens it's a ge- uh, geographic uh, – it fits geographically too. 
Uh, so I agree with you. Uh, the Big Ten would make the most. Uh, the Big Ten would make the most uh, sense. Problem is they got fourteen teams. So right. Um, now, I've I've yeah, been I've right. been of the opinion for a while that we're headed towards four sixteen team conferences. Um, eventually. So, uh, of course, you can't have 15, though. You either have to, you have to have an even number. So that puts the Big Ten in a situation where they got to add someone else. Uh, and there are a couple of possibilities, I think, without poaching from another Power Five. I mean, I think, uh, you know, Cincinnati, I don't know how Ohio State would feel about that. I have an idea that they wouldn't like it, but I don't know that for sure. But somebody like Cincinnati might make a little bit of sense. Uh you know, we could think about it and come up with one or two more probably. But, um, yeah, I, I think most people, if you ask, you know, most – if you ask 100 people, uh, you know, pick a conference for Notre Dame, I think the overwhelming majority would say the Big Ten. It's just about you look at the, the recruiting base, Notre Dame will tell you that they have a national recruiting base, and that's true. But then you start breaking down their roster, and it's Northern Illinois, Southern Wisconsin – uh, and in the metro areas, some in Ohio, some in Michigan. I mean, that's the majority of where they're getting their kids. And if they get in the Big Ten, then they even have to go even more directly head-to-head against Ohio State and against Michigan and against Wisconsin to recruit those kids where now they can say, you know, they can they don't have to make the counter Big Ten argument. If you got a kid that doesn't want to play in the Big Ten, Notre Dame can say, well, come with us and right. play these other, these other schools. So, I mean – I think that factors into it because, you know, you talk about geography, but Notre Dame's real fan base, where they're geographically, where their fans are, is Chicago. That that that's where that's Notre Dame's quote unquote hometown. I mean, they're thirty miles away. That's where their big base is. Yeah, I don't know. That, I, I, I really, I don't know. I don't know of anybody who would think any other conference made any sense at all. I mean, so I think like mm-hmm. it's rare, but I think everyone agrees with you. I I don't think there's anybody going what Notre Dame in the Big Ten. That's dumb, except Notre Dame. <laughs> yep, Notre Dame had their chance. They had their chance in point in 2008, and I think again in 2013, and both times, more or less said no thanks, and then the Big Ten said we're not coming back a third time. Right. Yeah. We're, we're not coming back. And, it, and a lot of that was that NBC TV money. That had a lot to do with it, too. Listen, Notre Dame makes less money TV contract-wise than any school in the SEC. So Notre Dame had a leg up 20 years ago. Not anymore. And, and, you know, Notre Dame was the only school where all 12 games came on TV for a long time. That was, but that's not the case anymore. We talked about this the other day. Georgia, you know, two or three, four Georgia games a year used to be either not on at all or on pay per view. That's just not the case anymore with ESPN two and SEC Network one and two. And I mean, there's a hundred different channels that college football games come on now. It, literally every game is on every single week. Um, so everyone is making TV money now, and the SEC per school makes more than Notre Dame does in TV money. So that excuse has dried up. Uh, l- listen, the only reason Notre Dame's not in a conference, well, there's a couple of reasons, and, and, and th- these are just the facts. Number one, they think they're too good for it. They don't think they need it. Okay, that's number one. Um, now, that's a theory that can be proven wrong should they ever go 11-1 and or 12-0 and and get left out of the playoff. Then they'll find out they do. The second reason they don't want to join a conference, they don't want to play a 13th game. It, it, I mean, it's that simple. It's, it's that simple. Now, they deny that, and I don't. I don't get it uh, because if the goal is to make the playoff, then okay, take your chances. Twelve and zero. Why take a chance on a thirteenth game? But that's what it is. They don't want to play a thirteenth game, and they think they're too good for a conference. The money thing is not a reason anymore because the other schools are making uh, as much, if not more, than Notre Dame um, in TV uh, money. Uh, so. Uh, that excuse has done uh, dried up. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to let you go uh, and, and run to the next call. Appreciate you calling in tonight, sir. You good people. Uh, yeah, you are. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got some super chats here. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, home Slice. Good morning, sir. Uh, why is this called Uncle Lou After Dark? Isn't it morning? 
yes, it is morning, and it's called uh, Uncle Lou After Dark because it's dark outside. Um, so I know that's confusing to some, uh, but that's really the simplest way I can explain it without drawing a picture. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Pigskin Pete, good morning in two. Uh, he says, take those cheap sunglasses off. Um, I'm not taking them off unless you threaten to unsubscribe. So sorry about that. Uh, Christopher Duncan, uh, thank you for the super chat, sir. Notre Dame, just a glorified group of five team anyway. Uh, I mean, I disagree with that. I mean, I understand what you're saying, sort of. Uh, you know, Notre Dame is still a huge name, not only nationally, but, I mean, worldwide. I mean, if you went to... Uh, if, if you went to bumfuck Egypt and asked the first idiot you saw to name 10 college football teams, first of all, I don't know if he could name 10, but one of the ones he could name would be Notre Dame. I mean, as, you know, we, as much as we rag and trash Notre Dame, they're one of the most prominent names in all of college football. That does mean something. And they haven't been a terrible team lately. I mean, they haven't won a national title since, what, 1989 or whatever it was. But they've been relatively good, particularly this last 10 years, right? I mean, they played for a title in 2012. They had that one really bad season where they were 3-9 and nine under Brian Kelly. But typically, they're winning 10-plus games a year. Um, they did make the playoffs once, right? Uh, several New Year's Six Bowls. I mean, so just to say that they're a terrible team, even though, believe me, uh, when it comes to riling up the Notre Shamers, I, no one gets a bigger kick out of it than I do. Uh, but I do think they are uh, on the level of a – like to say they're not on the level of a Power Five, I, I, I don't even think I could go that far. But I do I do understand and appreciate the sentiment. <coughs> and uh, I hope it got a few of them riled up, uh, particularly that N.D. Sean uh, 45, which I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> that little three-year-old. Uh, pigskin Pete. Notre Dame is is uh, broke because Jesus didn't get his stimulus check. I know for a fact Jesus got his stimulus check. He was the original socialist, Jesus. There hasn't been a human being alive before, during, or since Jesus H. Christ that was more of a socialist than he was. Uh, so I'm pretty sure he was, I'm pretty sure he got his check. I don't know. He was a carpenter. Maybe he was a contractor. Maybe he was like a. T maybe it was a situation where he was a 1099, and I don't know. I, even the, even those people were supposed to get their stimulus checks, though. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, I do know that uh, if he did get that twelve hundred dollars, he better he better he better have gave his hundred and twenty dollars to whatever church he goes to. The church is like the mafia. You got to kick it up. You make you make you make some scratch. That's fine. You can pocket a little, but you got to kick some upstairs. That's how it works in the church. We all know this. Mel and Matt, good morning to you, sir. Uh, graduated from Alabama with bachelor's in criminal justice, May second, class of twenty twenty, quarantine class. Have they rescheduled y'all's graduation? Are they gonna Are they gonna do a public thing for you guys? I know at Georgia they reschedule it for uh, the middle of October. Uh, to try to let uh, to try to let that graduating class have a have a ceremony and, and walk and walk the stage and all that they're doing it at Sanford Stadium, uh, you know, as long as uh, health wise uh, we're allowed to do that kind of thing, uh, I'm in uh, in October. But that's what Georgia has done. They've rescheduled theirs for uh, I believe it's October 16th or 19th somewhere in that range, sometime in that time frame there. Uh, Wonder if Alabama. But congratulations on graduating though. Uh, bachelor's in criminal justice. What are you going to do with that? Are you get some sort of law enforcement? Uh, are you going to law school? What? I uh, wonder what your. Uh, wonder, wonder what your plan is. Uh, wonder what your plan is with that. Well, congratulations, though, Matt. Uh, that's a big deal. All joking aside, that's a big deal. Proud of you, sir. Happy for you too. Uh, hope you don't have an, a whole bunch of student loans. You got to spend the next thirty years paying back. Also, and two in addition to that. Uh, what is this? Oh, yeah. In addition to that as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. yeah. Okay, that's it for the super chats. Don't forget, we're giving away a T-shirt tonight. Five dollars on the PayPal, uh, and I've got PayPal pulled up, so I see all you guys that have entered on the PayPal page at the end of the show. I'll call everything out so you guys know uh, you got included, and 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 all that. We'll get to that at the end of the show. So, uh, here's the uh, here's the link again. Nope, that ain't it. 
one of the mods can well one of the mods post the link again because uh, i don't have it uh, on my copy and paste i don't know what happened to it let's get back to the phone calls though hit the paypal if you want to uh enter for the uh free t-shirt uh, every five dollars get you entered back to the show and that there were the phone calls and that and this also in two yeah good morning but you're on with uncle lou though what's going on man what's up buddy not much how are you tonight oh i'm doing great good you know who this is or did the call screener get it wrong again oh it, it says it, this is cleave i just can tell i didn't even look at the uh i didn't even look at the screener before i hit the button but i can tell who this is oh gotcha okay um i was gonna ask you uh is there any possible way have you looked into doing any of your live shows whether the nighttime or the morning show in like a podcast type of format because i'll be honest with you youtube drains my battery on my phone like crazy so yeah. it would be more convenient and i've found that it uses less power if i use um a uh um you know listen to it on the podcast uh, type of format yeah you're not the first person to ask me about that and uh there's not really any good reason why uh I mean, I, I'll, well, I'll be honest. I don't know anything about podcasts or how they work at all. So that right there uh, is the primary reason I haven't done that. I, I really wouldn't even know where to start. Not that I couldn't figure it out if it was something I wanted to do. If I ever did it, it, it wouldn't, uh, you know, it would be uploaded as a podcast later. You know what I mean? Like later in the day, some right. kind of time. It wouldn't be live. That'd be fine with me. Yeah. Uh, you're not the first person to ask about yeah. that. So, uh, uh, you know, it seems like every time somebody asks, I say, well, I need to look into that, and maybe do that, and then I never do it. So I I don't want to lie to you and tell you that, yes, I'm doing it next week, but um, it is something that uh, I'm aware people would 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 want. So I will, I will attempt to look into it. <laughs> yeah, that would be that? awesome. I mean, it, it was, it's more convenient and, um, you know, I, you know, try to listen to morning, catch the morning show when I can, but, right. you know, that no, I get YouTube, it. It, yeah. it drains your battery like crazy. Yeah, and, I mean, and a lot of people do that. I mean, I'll end the live show and it'll say whatever it says, two or 300 views, and then by the next day it's got, you know, twice that. So I know there's a lot of people that are watching it after the fact. Um, so, uh, and, and these videos are not monetized anyway, the live shows. So it's not like. I just want people to watch them on YouTube instead of a podcast for some particular reason. It doesn't matter because I don't monetize these live shows anyway. Um, so, uh, th so there's really no reason I haven't done it other than the fact that I have no idea how, but li I, everybody right. and their brother has a podcast. So I know for a fact it can't be hard to do. So, um, I, I need right. to, uh, I, I need to, uh, I need to look into that. Yeah, that would be awesome. And then I'll throw my hat in the ring for the list of people who want to see uh, more of your, you know, um, calling the, uh, um, what was it you did? Calling the bookstore. Oh, yes. Your vlog and yeah. super characters. I know what you've got going on, you know, at home and all that, but I'll put my, you know, vote into the, uh, um, you know, campaign to get your uh, regular videos going again. So. Yeah. Yeah, I uploaded a couple last week, and I got a couple planned for uh, this week. So there will be a couple out this week back on the main channel. And as far as calling the bookstores go, uh, my plan kind of got messed up with that when they closed them all down. So, uh, uh, you know. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I and about that. don't yeah. want to call and yell at the answering okay. machine. But I, I'm assuming you did see me call and yell at all the politicians, though. Yes, I did see that one. Okay, yeah, that was uh, last right week. When it came out. That that yeah. was great. Oh yeah. Yeah. So and, uh, and I kind of going into it, I was, I was going into it. I was sitting there wondering, okay, I really don't think he's going to get anybody on the phone. And lo and behold, you got one person on the phone the first video, and then of course somebody called back the second one. Yeah. But at least the first one, you got at least one person on the phone. That was pretty cool. And yeah. that guy could not be more annoying he sounded like he wanted to hang up with you right away well let's be real the guy was an asshole and he's getting another call from me he was. i mean i'm just gonna be real the he guy the guy treated was. me like complete crap uh and and yeah, uh he and, and he's gonna rue the day uh that he decided to go ahead and yeah. make that life-altering mistake i can promise you and as far oh, as yeah. uh as far as the efforts i put into that noble endeavor 
of calling politicians. I can tell you this on the record right now, 100% for certain. If we have a college football season this year, it's because of me. If we don't, it's because the politicians were lazy. What about calling like university presidents and, you know, ADs and stuff like that? Funny you should mention that. Uh, someone sent me a list of every conference commissioner's phone number. Uh, the Mark Emmert, the president of the NCAA, his phone number, the phone number to the to the college football playoff committee office. Or so I have a list of that. All the college presidents. Somebody sent me an entire list. They did their home went ahead and did their homework, sent it to me. Nice. So if need be, um, I can crawl up their ass too. Nice. That, yeah. yeah, that would be good. It'd be a good yeah. video. That, Let me that call would them be a up. good one. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, they don't have anything to do. These oh, yeah. college All presidents. Right. All right, buddy. Appreciate the call. Of course, and and just like you said. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, just like you said, they don't they don't care about you know to hear from voters until it's November. And you, you hit the nail on the head with that. Oh, you're 100% right. I guarantee you. Yeah, point. yeah, yeah. Thank you for the call. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's 100% right. And I think I even said it in one of the videos. If I didn't, I should have. If I was making these phone calls in October, these politicians would be answering the phone or calling me back themselves. When it comes time to beg for votes, these people are very uh, accessible. Very accessible. Hell, I could probably get uh, I could probably get Mike Pence to come to my garage and do a show with me. You know, in October. But now you can't get none of these. You can't get none of these clowns to answer the phone now. Republican, Democrat, don't matter. None, they're all the same. They don't care about you until it's time for a vote. Period. Period. I mean, that's just the. Uh, that's just that's just the cold hard facts, Jack. Uh, please believe that. Mark Dudley, good to see you in here, sir. How you been? Anyone watching uh, Korean baseball? First game next Tuesday at 1 in the morning. We talked about that this morning on the morning show. Me and BVD did. I said, yeah, we finally got ba okay. baseball finally starting. In Korea, though. Uh, I, but I heard Major League Baseball starting up July 1st. At least that's their plan as of right now. They're going to start practicing around June 10th. They, they claim they need three weeks of practice before they can play. Uh, keep that in mind when you're thinking about football. Football is going to need at least, at a minimum, twice that at least six weeks so uh we need to be practicing football by mid-july or you can forget about about watching college football on september 5th that, that week one if they're not practicing by mid-july you can just forget it it just won't happen they need a minimum i think they need closer to eight weeks but maybe maybe they could can maybe they could trick people into playing on six weeks practice i don't know but if we're not practicing by mid-july you can forget games on september 5th it won't be happening uh, i'm still holding out hope that we have some kind of a season this year though uh worst case scenario i think they'll play it in the spring but i don't want that uh, i want football in the fall like it's supposed to be i don't know what these politicians are doing but they better they, you know they need to fix it fast quick fast and and uh in a hurry uh that's pretty much all i have to say about that uh, last thing they that, trust me when i tell you, they do not want me calling them every day they don't um you know i, I, I don't take no for an answer good morning but drawn with uncle lou though You there? Hello? Hello? Step one, dial number. Step two, speak. Could always try again. Uh, yeah, good morning, but you're on with Uncle Lulo. Dirty Red down here in Gainesville, brother. Red, what's up, buddy? What's up, man? So hey, uh, up. in the honor of uh, Cinco de Mayo, when it's no test. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Chalupa and yes. uh, and uh, Chihuahua. Yeah, La Thank Florida you. Cayman is is uh, Pinochas. Yes. I don't know if, if you don't speak Spanish. That means you Gators wearing jean shorts a little bit light in the jean shorts. Yeah, it's funny you should mention that. Uh, right before I came out here, Jose Chavez, E Chavez was uh, the house was burning down. Uh, we're gonna die in here, and Jose Chavez, E Chavez is out there doing it with his horse. 
I got you. I got you. Hey, um, I, I jumped in here a little bit late, and I saw the title of this video was Notre Dame is a little bit nervous about the upcoming football schedule. Yes. Is that because there is a rank? Is that because there is a rank team on that schedule? <laughs> Uh, well, they're always um, nervous hey, about Rick, that, but uh, no, yeah. Uh, you heard what? You, did you hear? Did no, you, I mean, did you hear what the, the real reason? Or no, I really didn't. not sure if you just tuned in. Uh, no, uh, they asked. He did an interview today, the the athletic director at Notre Dame, and they asked him. They said, you know, a lot of these Power Five conferences are talking about playing a conference only schedule if the season has to get shortened. If that happens, what's Notre Dame going to do? And uh, he said, well. Uh, yeah. you know, we, 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 we're confident that, uh, even if we can't play any power five teams, we'll have no problem filling our schedule with quality opponents, which is just complete BS. Uh, then he said, uh, we're, yeah, we're actually rest, hoping the, they'll change the their the mind country. and go to a conference plus he wants them to go to a conference plus one system <laughs> for obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was that Lou. So, yeah, you're my age. You're roughly my age. Remember when Hulk Hogan, Hogan was fighting the iron sheet. Remember how oh, unified yeah. the entire country oh. was and wanted Hulk Hogan to just beat the crap out of the out of the Iron Sheik? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah Notre yeah. Dame is the Iron Sheik. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Everyone, especially in the South. If you want to know why people hate you, Notre Dame? It's statements like what this guy just put out there. Mm. I, I just – look, if you're Notre Dame – there's a lot of things, if, if you're a fan of them, there's a lot of things to be nervous about, like what the priest did with your nine-year-old son. But the football schedule shouldn't be shouldn't rank up there at the top. You know, I, I, I'm so tired. I, I swear to God, there's, there's numerous football teams that we all love to hate, uh, especially the Florida Gators. But I have to say, Notre Dame ranks above all of them because of statements <laughs> like this. The... The, the entitlement, the air of invincibility when you haven't won anything in how long? Like, like you're the only football team that matters. This, this Catholicism topped off with, I, I, I can't even, I can't even get my thoughts together. The, the, please, everybody who, who plays Notre Dame, if you get them down, put your foot on their throat, and score 40 more points on Notre Dame. Yeah, don't do this like Georgia why, and purposely let them keep it close like that. Don't yeah, do that. This is why people hate you, Notre Dame. Yeah. No no other team. Who, who else has come out and said this, Uncle Lou? Right. Well, and, and then they try to spin it like it has nothing to do with Notre Dame, the whole conference plus one thing. We don't want to lose these great traditional matchups like Clemson versus South Carolina. Like he actually, like of all yeah. the non-conference matchups in the world that are played every year, yeah. right? I mean, uh, Florida, right. Florida State, whatever. You just go down the list of all those games that 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 he would pick to mention as like we have to save the non-con games because of <gasps> Clemson versus South Carolina. <laughs> like no. And again, if you're a religious man, this is what bothers you. Not, not the touchy feely going on behind that little, that little dark room you guys got going on there. I mean, mm. this is what bothers you. Mm. Holy yeah. crap! Come on, man. This is why people hate you. <laughs> I mean, I, no, I, I, I don't get listen. It. You're preaching how to the choir. You, how do you not see that? I, how do I, you not see that? Yeah, I, I see it. I see Look, it. I'm a Georgia fan. If Tennessee or Florida is playing Notre Dame. I'm going for both of them. I, I, we, we hate you that bad. And because of statements like that, this is why we do. That's like what people used to hell, say. Notre Dame. People used to say, uh, I would root for ISIS over Florida. <laughs> exactly. If Bin Laden was the quarterback versus Notre Dame, I'm bowing to the East. I'm sorry. This man said Notre Dame We're is the. It, this man said Notre Dame is the Ivan Drago of college football. <laughs> exactly. He's the Iron Sheik. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, brother, I'll let you go, man. <laughs> man, that was a good call. Thank you, sir. It's good to hear from you. All right. All you. right. We'll, we'll talk to you again soon. Oh, my God. 
Melissa May, thank you for the super chat, ma'am. You're good people. Some of these guys underestimate my smack talk skills. Woo. Can you please let them know that I can make them cry if I really wanted to? Uh, I have known uh, Mrs. May for a while. Uh, not from longer than I've known since before YouTube. So, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I love, you know, listen, I love an argument when it doesn't involve me. So I'm just, but tread lightly, you know, don't come to me about your feelings being hurt. That's all I'll say. Thank you for the super chat, Ms. May. Christopher, uh, Partney. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, thank you for the super chat, sir. Uh, a duck fan stuck in Mormonville. Keep doing what you do, buddy. Thank you, sir. I appreciate uh, that. I'm probably, I mean, I'm no Oregon fan, clearly. I'm probably, when it comes to YouTube, though, I am uh, higher on Oregon than anybody else is. I think Oregon is, uh, I think Oregon's a really good team now, uh, but I think, especially if they can keep crystal ball there for another couple of years. Oregon is a scary team in the future. You just look at the way they're recruiting. I'm not saying Oregon is like at the level of the top two, three, four, five, whatever, how many teams you want to say over the last four or five years when you look at recruiting and on-field performance, whatever four or five teams you want to put in the top. I'm not saying Oregon is quite there now, but they're so far ahead of everyone else in the Pac-12. They're turning into uh, West Coast Clemson. Not that they're at Clemson's level yet, but, uh, you know, like Clemson is an elite team. They, they could compete and possibly win any conference in America in, in any given year right now, right? Um, but the ACC is friggin' terrible. So every year you go, well, you know, Clemson's in the playoff. That doesn't mean Clemson's not any good. They're, they're amazing, clearly. Uh, but, like, the gap is the same in the Pac-12, I feel like. Oregon is so much further ahead than everyone else in the Pac-12, in my opinion, anyway, especially with Southern Cal treading water, uh, well, taking on water, really, uh, with Clay Helton at that helm. What a joke that guy is. What a disaster he is. Uh, now that Willie Taggart's not in a Power 5 position anymore, Clay Helton might be uh, the most uh, under-deserving Power 5 head coach in America at this point. Uh, but anyway, so I think Oregon is in a good position uh, to win the Pac-12. Like, I'll pick them this year. I'll pick them next year. I just – I think there's a gap there between Oregon and the rest of the Pac-12, similar to the way there's a gap between Clemson and the ACC. So, Oregon doesn't have to be – uh, as good as Alabama or Clemson or Oklahoma or Georgia or Ohio State, whatever teams you want to name. If they can win the Pac-12 with one loss or none, they're likely to get into the playoff. And I think they're – it's just a matter of – Oregon's getting into a playoff soon. I, I mean, I I don't understand how anybody – let me ask you this. If you had $100 and the bet was Oregon will make the playoffs at least once in the next four years, yes or no, would you bet that $100 on yes or no? I would bet it on yes, and I think if you bet it on no, I think you're allergic to money. I, I, I think Oregon is almost a lot to make the playoff at least once sometime in the next couple of years. So that's uh, for whatever it's worth, which probably ain't that much. That's my opinion on it. Thank you for the super chat, though. Uh, Alan V. Troll Patrol. Good morning to you, sir. I need my contest-winning T-shirt to read, I'm with stupid. Then the finger pointing towards my pal, Dennis Wilson. Mr. Wilson! He's a Miami fan, so we just pat him on the head uh, and tell him good job no matter what he does at Dennis Wilson, don't we? He's good people, though. Sort of. Yeah, sort of. In the 305, bitches treat me like I'm Uncle Lou. See what this is now. Uh, what happened? Uh, I either hung up on whoever that was on accident or they hung up. If I hung up on you, I apologize. I might have hit the wrong button. It Right when I clicked the button, he went away. So I either hit the wrong button or he hung up. Oh, uh, yeah, good morning, but you're on with Uncle Ludo. Hello? 
going once. Let's see who's up next to play the prices right. Good morning, you're on with Uncle Ludo. It's Ballard. How you doing tonight? Ballard, did I hang up on you or did you hang up? Yeah, uh, it, I think it hung up twice. I've been trying to get in. Okay, I, and, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I saw that you were next, it, and right when I went to put you on, <laughs> your number disappeared, and I said, shoot, I thought I might have hit the wrong button. So I'm glad you got back through, though. So uh, anyway, what's on your mind tonight, buddy? <laughs> Not much, just, uh, you know, uh, still trying to wait on sports, I guess, and everything. And uh, I'll tell you what, I was um, thinking about doing a, a video today, looking forward to the 2021 season. Of course, you brought this up once or twice. I think you had a live stream. Or, I think, uh, didn't you already do a Georgia Clemson hype and hate video for the 2021 matchup next year? Uh, sort of. Uh, I um, mean,. I mean, sometimes in the off season, I just get to uh, uh, I, I I miss trash talking. I mean, I do a lot of it during the season, right. but so sometimes in the off season, I just I feel like doing it. So it's almost like I'll you know I'll invent a reason to do it sometimes, like pretending to be mad at Tennessee's recruiting the other day, you know, just so I can just so I can yell for a while. <laughs> it's like therapy for me. So yeah, I, I mean out. a million. When, when that Georgia Clemson game was announced, I just had a million people asking me about it all the time. So I said, well, let me just go ahead and set Clemson straight now. Uh, so, but the good thing about that Georgia Clemson game is that it's week one, I believe. Yeah, it's week one. It's a it's a kickoff classic game. Yeah. So, I'm just telling yeah. you right now to, remember, to, to, um, to, to the taters that are in the comment ago. section right now, don't go anywhere next off season. Okay, it, it's going to be a fun off season. Now I'm going to, well, everyone already knows, but it, it's going to be a Miami, Florida situation from from last off season. But you know, Clemson is going to get their daily dose of Uncle Lou uh, whenever this season yeah, ends till the time next know. season kicks off. Period. Yeah. That's just happening. So, and I think yeah, everyone yeah, knows yeah. that already. I hope. Yeah. I'm pretty sure most of the Clemson fans that are around here have been around here a long time and they know how this thing works here on this channel but until yeah. it's directed at your team it's hard to really know how you're gonna act and we did play clemson i believe the first year i was on youtube but i wasn't really doing much trash talking back yeah. then that was when i was making tinfoil hat videos and shit i did make some clemson videos making fun of that terrible ass quarterback they had cole stout or whatever his name was the dude was hot garbage Never heard uh, of him. Yeah. Never heard of him. Neither, neither has anyone else since then either. Uh, of course, he was so Damn. bad. He was so bad they had to put that jabroni Deshaun Watson in the game. Jesus Christ, this guy was running for his life. This guy Deshaun Watson was running like a chicken with his head cut off. It was hilarious. I think he still well, has see, PTSD from first. that game. It was his first game ever. He was a true freshman, and it was week one. Uh, oh, okay. You know, well, that uh, I mean, we went ahead. I mean, we beat him like they owed us money, uh, which they do. So, yeah. But anyway. when uh, Pace can Pete called up on the show a few months back and you got mad at him about like the whole Clemson cheating thing, and <laughs> you made a comment. You're like, every Clemson fan in this world or on YouTube will know Uncle Lou by 2021. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, I was never mad at uh, I was never mad at uh, uh, I was never mad at Pete. Uh, me and Pete are college football YouTubers. So clearly, you, yeah, uh, you I, just I mean, yell and try I, to know, make a point. Right. So that's all. So you know, you know, me and me and I get it. You know, there's nothing. There's no issues with me and Pete. Me and Pete are fine. So don't worry about it. We're not getting divorced. Or, the, you know, the rumors of our the ru the rumors of our demise have been greatly exaggerated. So, yeah, look that up on Did, Google. Um, and, and I uh, also want to double check. And Ask Alexa sure, about I that. I believe. Alexa, are the rumors yeah, of their demise you, greatly exaggerated? Yes. Do it. Anyway, do what? you called me. What were you saying? Oh, uh, I know. Um, uh, I believe you scheduled me for next Monday for the morning show, right? Oh, you can kiss my ass, uh, too, because we play Alabama week three, so you might as well go ahead and start stocking up on Kleenex, too, because you got plenty well, coming, too. Well, I have a quick question about it because uh, I think I heard something today on the morning show or whenever it was that you're using Skype for it now. How does that work? How does Skype work? 
I know how Skype works. I have it, but well, that, like, do I need to send an email or something about that? Or oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You just instead of emailing me your phone, phone number, phone just e- just email me your Skype name. That's all. That's it. That's all. Just email oh, okay. me. Just email your Skype name. You say yeah, you say I, you're on tomorrow. Uh, mm-hmm. no. No, uh, you're on, on uh, next Monday. You're on next like Monday. Six days. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so, so just email your. I was uh, just trying to make sure so I wasn't prepared right. for that. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, it's fine. I mean, you can do it from your phone. It's a free app. Just download the app. Pick a username, whatever. Blah yeah. blah blah. It's easy. Easy peasy lemon uh, lemon squeezy. It's as easy as making. Uh, you know, it's as easy as a college field goal kicker being able to at least make sixty five percent of his kicks. Yeah, except for Bama kickers, we can't. Right. I'll, I'll tell you what. Of all the kickers I've seen at Alabama, first off, I think the worst I've ever seen, and you probably remember this guy from the 2013 Iron Bowl, the kick six, not Adam Griffin. Cade Foster was probably one of the worst kickers I've ever seen at Bama, I've ever seen in college football history, at least in the 2013 season, if anything. First off, the dude's built like a tight end. I don't know what he's doing out there using his feet. Well, the worst kicker, <laughs> I mean, the worst kicker the y'all have is all is the next one. I mean, that's just the, the next. You know, whoever the kicker is now is the worst one. That's just it's just been that way since Saban got there. Um, uh, Alabama wait, has Alabama has missed more extra points since Nick Saban got to Alabama than any other Power Five team okay. in America. Uh, for whatever reason, the guy can't well, we uh, develop or recruit them. kickers. It's a damn shame. I don't. The game has passed Nick Saban by. Uh, it's it's a shame to see. It really is. Um, uh, it's just it's just sad. It, it's like watching Brett Favre play for the Jets at this point. Trying to watch Nick Saban <laughs> coach anymore. It's just it's almost not just fun to make fun of the guy. guy he's now. just completely lost. He doesn't know what he's doing. Field goal kickers out of the stands can't make a friggin' extra point. These people. Uh, but but as far as the worst one ever, it's always the next one. The next Alabama kicker is the worst one ever. You know, it's 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 like the it's, you know tomorrow. It's like free be, free beer tomorrow. You know, Alabama's getting a guy Not that can make extra points tomorrow. Sure you know, they got to sign up on campus. I promise tomorrow <laughs> we'll have a guy that can make extra points. You show up on campus the next day, the sign's still there. Tomorrow we will have a kicker that can make it. Like, the sign never goes away. It's like the thing at Hooters, free beer tomorrow. You go tomorrow, the sign's still there, free beer tomorrow. You guys can't – I mean, it's just – how, 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 how long? How many times are we going to go down this road? Every year, every offseason, this is the offseason, Nick Saban's going to go out and get him a great kicker. And you know what? He does. He goes out and gets a great kicker. Then he gets him on campus to Tuscaloosa, and he ruins him mentally, period. Uh, a, a kicker well, at Alabama has no chance from the time he shows up there because Nick Saban just completely mind fucks these kickers. What? What'd you say? Will Riker, this freshman guy. Well, he'll be a sophomore. Yeah, he's the next worst kicker y'all have ever had. You know, uh, James Comey is getting arrested tomorrow. Watch you know, out. Hooters will have free beer tomorrow. James, James Comey is getting arrested tomorrow. Hooters has free beer tomorrow. Alabama will have a guy that can make extra points tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, we, 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 we all know these things. These things have not changed. So, uh, anyway, hey, thank you for the call, uh, sir. It was very enlightening. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. Uh, and whoa, Todd on it. Uh, whoa, yeah. Todd, whoa. Calm my ass down. What are we doing here? Where am I? Then you go to the studios. This is amazing. Looks like a garage, sort of. It has a garage. They kept saying it was your mom's basement. My mom doesn't have a basement. Must be my grandma's garage. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense to me. Oh, yeah, good morning, but you're on with Uncle Ludo. God, I'm a third-town caller now. I was wondering how you're doing tonight. I'm doing great, Steve. How are you, sir? doing good um, i was wondering if you heard the latest uh chris fowler and kirk herster were doing an instagram story on saturday and chris fowler had said something about the california governor and then i read it later on to where the california governor said there will be no sports in the state of california in the year 2020 and also we went on to read an article where said the pac-12 would not be anywhere near close to being ready for football season i was wondering what your thoughts on were on that and how that's going to maybe we won't be having a season because of that. I was wondering right. what your thoughts were. Uh, a, uh, I, I, I'm, uh, it, 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 it's not that I don't believe you. 
Uh, but uh, it's 2020, and I don't believe anything unless I see it for myself. I haven't heard anything about the governor of California, and I have a feeling this would be um, everywhere. Um, so I will look into that. I have not heard that, that the governor of California said there will be no sports in California at all in 2020. Baseball is starting in July, playing in their home stadiums. Um, and California's got how many baseball teams? Four. Um, right. So I. So again, and I and I have not seen the Instagram thing you're talking about, I, and I have not seen the statement. It. I, I, first of all, if he said that, um, he's an idiot. Now it may be that we can't have sports this year, but to to say that now is potato on its face, in my opinion. Um, I, I don't know how he can possibly know the state of affairs as it relates to public health and coronavirus. I, he, how can he possibly know what that's going to be like in October or September, October or November? How can he know that now? I don't think he can. It, it for all I uh, maybe it's worse then. I don't know, or maybe it's gone. I, I don't know that either. Uh, but I don't think there's any way any. Uh, so I, I I don't have a. I don't have an opinion on that other than that if he said it, he's an idiot. Right. I just heard rumors, and like I said, I think there are rumors, but, like, I've heard that California doesn't want to open until there is a vaccine. I just hope that's not true. I just, it's like you said, we can't, it, you shouldn't be making decisions right now in May when you don't know what it's going to be like down the road in July or August or something like that. Right. Now, I'm not suggesting that they they should wait to the last minute. They shouldn't. They should be planning a bunch of things out now. They should have a plan to play the season as as normal with fans. That's obvious. Uh, that's option one. But they should also have another plan. Okay, what if we can't start the season until – what if instead of starting on September 5th, we have to start on October 5th? They should have a plan for that. What are we going to do? What if they have to take away the non-con games and play conference only? They should have a plan for that. What if we have to play in the spring? They should have a plan for that. So, point is – uh, and, and we may end up playing the football season in the spring, in which case the governor of California will get his way and be no college football in 2020. We'd still have a 2020 season. It would just be played in the spring of 2021. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, it brings up the point of why college football is so much more complicated and difficult to iron out than it is almost any other sport, and especially the professional sports. I mean, you look at baseball, there's 30 teams, basketball, 30, 32, whatever it is, football, 32, NFL. It's easy to get those things lined up. College football has got 130 teams just in, uh, just in the FBS, and another hundred and something in FCS, and there is no governing body. I mean, the NCAA is a joke in general. The NCAA can't tell California or Georgia or Florida or Texas or New York or Ohio or anywhere, you have to play football. They can't. It, it's going to be up to each individual state. Okay, so what do you do if? Uh, Take the ACC, for example, because um, everyone has a general idea of which way to Pac-12 leans, right, politically. Right. Everyone has a general idea of which way the SEC leans politically. So forget those two because people just go to their corners and cry about how snowflakey the other one is. So take the ACC, okay? South Carolina governor and the presidents of South Carolina – uh, or Clemson comes out and says, good to go. We can play football. Um, uh, Florida State president comes out. Tallahassee, North Florida, we're good to go. We can play football. Three or four other schools do the same thing. Then Miami and Syracuse raise their hand and go, we can't play football down here. And Syracuse goes, we can't play football up here. What does the ACC do? So this is very complicated. Um, there's a lot of people that think it's going to be all or nothing. Either every Power 5 school in every state plays or none of them play. I, I don't know if that's what ends up happening or not. And then Because I've heard people say, well, just throw the Pac-12 out for this year. Okay, fine. What are you going to do about Syracuse? Um, you know, what if there's another uh, – you know, just a million things could happen. You, you know, it, there's not one person that can go, all right, on Tuesday, everybody in the SEC has to play football. That's just that's not going to happen. It's going to be up to each individual school, and unless they all get lined up and all on the same page, it's going to be hard to get it to happen. So we'll see. Uh, but Governor of California, generally speaking, an idiot, 
if he said absolutely no sports in California for 2020. I don't see how you can make that proclamation uh, on Cinco de Mayo. Right. Well, hopefully NASCAR and Major League Baseball kind of set the benchmark and the dominoes start the fall. But it's like you said a couple of weeks ago, if we get, if we don't get the students on campus, it's all for naught. We won't have football, period. So that's probably the first and foremost thing they have to worry about getting students on, which I heard George's president say they're hopeful or he thinks there will be students. Yeah. I mean I haven't heard any I haven't heard any college president or athletic director come out and say, Man, I really hope we don't play this year. <laughs> I, I mean they're yeah. they're all saying I mean these people they're they're not really gonna give you any news. I mean they're not gonna come out and give you so of course they're saying they wanna play. Um you know, the issue with fans, I just, I, I want, co- l- listen, nobody loves college football more than I do. Uh, now, millions of people love it just as much as I do, but there, there's no one that loves it more. I find a hard time finding justification for, okay, it's not safe enough for me to sit next to you in the bleachers, but it is safe enough for these hundred kids to roll around on the ground on top of each other for three hours every Saturday. I find that justification right. hard to make for college athletes. Like I said, pro sports are different. Number one, they're all paid. They have unions that protect them. Uh, They they can negotiate benefits and contracts for them. College doesn't have any of that. I just find it hard to believe that 60 Power 5 teams are going to go, yeah, not safe enough for for a 40-year-old to sit in the stands next to another 40-year-old. That's dangerous. Can't do that. No fans. But it is perfectly safe for these 100 kids to roll around on top of each other for three hours. And if they're going to do that, then I think they need to make a rule. The first team that has a player die from the coronavirus, that team gets an automatic bid to the playoffs. Uh, that's really the only way you're going to convince these teams to play, in my opinion. Now, I'm being facetious when I say that, but uh, I, I think you get the point. But, hey, thank you for the call, uh, sir, and to Steve. I think you said your name was. Thank you for the call, uh, Steve. I appreciate that. It was good to hear from you uh, also and to. Uh, yeah, it was, mostly. Uh, good morning, but you're on with Uncle Lou, though. Mark, comma, Tennessee Vols, uh, it's your opportunity, sir. Go. Changed his mind? I guess. I don't know. He didn't, uh, usually they at least breathe into the phone or something. Nothing that time. Uh, he might have got, he might have just passed away while he was waiting on hold or something. I'm not sure. Uh, somebody might want to. If anybody knows Mark, comma, Tennessee Vols, um, you might want to check on him. Maybe walk up to him, put your finger under his nose or something, see if you feel anything. I don't know. Uh, that was a little alarming, uh, to say the least. Uh, it was very alarming, actually. Uh, yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, no one else on hold, and it's after 11 o'clock, so we will end the call-in portion of the show. Uh, man, pretty, pretty pitiful effort tonight from my super fans. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit disappointed, uh, which clearly, uh, clearly I am. Don't I seem disappointed? Stop mistreating Uncle Lou! <coughs> Uh, yeah, first team, first team with a player to pass away from the, first, uh, first team, yeah, yeah, first team with a player that gets chops, uh, chopstick sick, automatic bid to the playoffs, then you might be able to convince these, uh, then you might be able to convince some of these schools to play, maybe. Uh, clearly that's not happening, though. Uh, at least I don't think it is. Should we give a shirt away? Let's give a shirt away. First, last chance to anybody that wants to get in. If you're not in, uh, last chance to get uh, to get in on the shirt. We're going to give this away. Let me pull up the. Uh, I'm going to use the same site we use all the time. It'll take me just a few minutes to pull this up, and then if you're not entered by uh, by then, then it's uh, then it's too late. Click the PayPal link if you want to get entered. Five dollars. Uh, 
Five dollar get you in, and we'll give a shirt away. Uh, all right, let me see what names we have here. Let me pull this back up. Where is it? Uh, let's see, Mr. Anderson, Celine Driver, Troll Patrol, Alan V. You guys are entered in to win. Somebody's gonna win. The odds are good when we do it on the PayPal thing because less people do it, obviously, because it's now you take the extra step. So your odds are good. Good luck to you, gentlemen. I'm gonna get your names entered in. Uh, entered in here. Uh, this is a lot easier on the morning show when I have BVD to help me. Uh, okay. I see what I did. Mr. Anderson, and that's what I'm going to type too. Mr. Anderson, I should just type Neo. Neo, Mr. Anderson, I want you to change your YouTube name to Neo. Can you do that for me? I would consider it a personal favor. All right, somebody's going to win a shirt. Let me pull this up on the screen so you guys can see it. Uh, most of you know how we do this, right? This is just a random. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is just a uh, random name picker website here. That's all. So. Pay attention. Pay no attention to all these ads on the screen. Whatever the hell this is. So, uh, oh wait a minute. We got to pick a number first. Uh, all right. Somebody in the comment section, pick a number uh, one through six. First one I see. Uh, that's what we'll go with. I got your Waikiki. I'll check it again in a second. Pick a number one through six. Th all right. Three. Rob Dog says three. So three will be the magic. Uh, three will be the magic number. Let me check this thing again. I missed a name, at least one name. I probably didn't refresh it when I looked at it the first time. That was probably the problem. Uh, yes, clearly that was the problem. All right, I got you, Waikiki. I'll, let me add you in here, sir. Uh, I'm going to do my best to spell your name the same way uh, I spelled it uh, last time, which I think would be uh, good to do. I think that's right. I think I spelled it right. Uh, okay, so three was the magic number. Uh, like I said, I think most of you know uh, by now how this works. But I click this button right here that says pick a random name. And it will scroll the list here and randomly pick one of them. Mind blown. Uh, the magic number is three. So the third pick will be the winner. So here we go. Pick number one. Alan V. Pick number two, Mr. Anderson. And pick number three, and the winner tonight of the free t-shirt is... Celine Driver. May the odds be ever in your favor. I wish everyone could win. Sorry about that. But we do plenty of giveaways here. So don't fret. Uh, no participation trophies, though. So shout out to Celine Driver. Uh, yes, Mitch, I did get your email. All right, Celine, you know the routine. Uh, you know what, Celine Driver? Because I know you have an original uh, LuTube shirt. I, I can't. I, I think you. Well, I know you were on there. I don't. Remember, but I don't know if you were on there when we talked about this. But uh, I have uh, someone else is handling my T-shirt store for me now, which is good news because I don't know what the hell I'm doing on there. Uh, so uh, there will be some new T-shirts coming out soon. So it's up to you, Celine Driver, what you want to do. Uh, if you want one of the ones that's on there now, of course, just let me know. Uh, or if you want to wait uh, a week or two, there will be um, there will be a couple more on there. It's up to you. You just send me an email or Facebook or whatever, you, or text me. You got my phone number. You can text me. You know how to get in touch with me. Uh, Harrison Triplett, thank you for the super chat, sir. He says, do you think uh, LeCount or Stokes can be first or second rounders? Uh, you know, 
I'm not sure about first rounders. I, I think LeCount, I think, has the potential to be a well, first of all, that's two difficult players for me to uh talk about because I think Richard LeCount, talent wise, his ceiling is unlimited. I've been disappointed in some things about Richard LeCount, namely his tackling ability. Uh he loves to run into things. He, he he doesn't have good technique, though, when he tackles. He he bumps into a lot of things and falls over and doesn't tackle. Uh, I have a little bit of an issue with that. With Stokes, now, he's playing way over his skis. He was not supposed to be this good. He's kind of a DeAndre Baker situation. Um... I don't think he's quite as good as DeAndre Baker, obviously. But what I mean is DeAndre Baker was a three-star. Stokes was not, you know, it's, when we signed Stokes, there wasn't a million people going around going, oh, my God, we signed Eric Stokes. Like, he wasn't, not that he wasn't any good. Clear, they're all good, or they wouldn't get scholars. But uh, he's playing way better, I think, than anyone ever expected. I don't think you can say that about Richard LeCount. That doesn't mean Richard LeCount's playing bad, though. Um, but he was a five star and he's, he's got some work to do. I would say, I would say both of those guys right now, in my opinion, second rounders, I think the issue with Stokes is going to be some of his measurables. And I know that when we really like a guy and then he's not quite tall enough for the NFL, we'll say, well, height don't matter. Such and such is only this tall. It all matters. It all gets, it all gets looked at. Um, you know, there's no one thing that, oh, you have to have this or or else you're not getting in the NFL. But I just have a feeling when Stokes goes through a combine, some of his measurables aren't going to measure up against some of the other corners that are coming out. So as of right now, I would, I would put those guys as second rounders. Um, and then depending on how many teams need a safety or a corner, maybe even third. But they can improve this year. I mean, Joe Burrow was a fifth or sixth rounder heading into last season, and he ended up going number one overall. So, And, again, I like both of those guys at Georgia. Um, I like them both. Georgia's defense is going to be ridiculous this year, so I'm not knocking them at all. Uh, but when you talk, start talking about people being first or second rounders, you're talking about the best 64 players in college football, basically. I'm not sure either one of those two qualifies that but they're close and both have the, the potential. Stokes isn't very popular for the most part. Uh, well, he, he yeah, well, that, that's sort of what I was getting at with his recruiting. Not a lot of people knew who he was. Um, I mean, Tyson Campbell was the guy that everybody was excited about. Stokes is better than Tyson Campbell, you know, and Tyson Campbell was the number two corner coming out that year. Sertan Jr. was number one. He went to Alabama. Tyson Campbell was number two. He came to Georgia. Nobody knew who the hell Eric Stokes was, and Eric Stokes has been the better player so far, in my opinion, which, again, I know isn't worth anything. You don't have to tell me. Yeah, Harrison uh, says Tyson Campbell doesn't have good ball skills at all. Tyson Campbell is sort of the opposite of Eric Stokes. If Ty Tyson Campbell could go to the NFL Combine tomorrow, and his measurables would be through the roof. He's got the height. He's got the wingspan. He's fast. <laughs> but then when they get out there and start throwing the pat, like, he's in, he's in good position. I, I don't understand. It seems to me. You, you, you don't get as far as Tyson Campbell has got without being taught to turn your head around when the ball's in the air. That That's my I, – I get so – the ball is – the ball – I'll be watching a Georgia game, and for the Patreon members who watch the, who watch the live streams of me watching the Georgia game can vouch for this. Every single time the ball is in the air and Tyson Campbell is covering the other team's wide receiver, I'm yelling at the top of my lungs, turn your damn head around. Just turn your head around. And he just won't do it. And it's it's so frustrating. You know what he reminds me of? Uh, Nate Patrick. 
Nate Tress Patrick, nowhere near one of the best inside linebackers Georgia's had in the last 10 years. But he was always in the right play. How many times did the other team run the ball and there was a hole, but then Nate Tress Patrick was right there? But he couldn't make the tackle. I'm like, what do you do? Like, like that's that's even more frustrating than just getting blocked out of the play. Like, if, if, if he just gets blocked out of the play, then you might not even notice him and see him. You might not even know he did anything wrong. But when he's literally right there in the hole every single time and just can't make the tackle, I mean, it just it makes you want to scream. And that's what it is with Tyson Campbell. And I'm just screaming, turn your head around. Frustrating. You talking about C.J. Henderson from Florida, Todd? He got drafted pretty high, didn't he? I'm pretty sure that he did. Trevor Lawrence was a generational talent. Yeah, I, don't, I mean... Most people knew that the time he was in ninth grade, and I don't think there's anybody left alive now that doesn't know it. All right, Celine Driver, congratulations again, buddy. George, you win the comment section every night, buddy. You're a real trooper. Uh, Mark says, isn't C.J. Henderson afraid of contact? Let's be honest. The majority of corners are afraid. The, the, the best corner in the history of football was scared to death of contact. Deion Sanders. A lot of corners are, uh, I don't know if scared is the right word, but it's not like they're itching to hit somebody a lot of times. These corners. Deion Sanders hated it. If Deion Sanders had to get by on his tackling ability, he never would have made it out of middle school football. He was horrible. He hated he he, he was a like, terrible tackler. Hated contact. Dude would run away from it. Yeah, I don't think anybody. Uh, I think right now, it, it, I think everybody would put their money on Trevor Lawrence right now to be the number one pick next year. I can't imagine anybody putting money anywhere else. You are a trooper, George. Trevor will go one unless Fields win the Heisman like I think he will. Uh, NFL doesn't draft people based off of Heisman results. Yeah, I would I would put my money on Fields being uh, second. Yeah. 
NFL loves that kind of uh, quarterback these days. He stayed healthy last year for the most part. He had a little bit of a leg injury late in the season, but he stayed healthy for the most part last year. Fields did. Yeah, I'm good, Devil. Wish you, buddy. Yeah, UJ wasted him. The biggest uh, I, Kirby could coach for another fifty years. He'll never make a, he'll never make a mistake that big. I, it's impossible. Um, he he may not um, ever get past it either. If uh, if Ohio State somehow wins a national title with Justin Fields this year, that's very bad news for Georgia and Kirby Smart because those questions at that point then will. I, I it's hard to imagine the questions now ever going away. If Justin Fields wins a, 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 a national title at Ohio State, uh, that that is that is really really bad for Kirby Smart and UGA. It's just a it's already a bad look. People already talk about it all the time. The comparisons are just natural. We saw it all last year between Fields and Fromm. You're going to see it this year between Fields and Newman. It's just you it you know it's just uh it, it's just natural to make those comparisons. And it was just a blunder of epic proportions. Um, Kirby knows it. He can't come out and admit it. He never will. I, I don't blame him for not admitting it, but it was just an epic failure. Um, the whole Justin Fields situation at Georgia was just biblically stupid. I mean, it, you can't you you can't possibly over exaggerate how stupid it was. And the only thing that could make it worse would be Ohio State winning a national title with Justin Fields. Yeah, and Jalen Hurd beat out Alvin Kamara, fireball. So, you know, smoke some of your own shit every once in a while, buddy. Fromm never beat him out. Fromm was picked. Fromm was chosen. I will bet you a mini helmet uh, that Fields will finish in front of Lawrence for, uh, for the Heisman. Uh, man, that's a that's tough because I I know it's gonna be one of those two. Uh, I'll take that bet just because I'm collecting the mini helmets, but I I I'm not confident in that. But I but I'll take that. I mean, if if I had to put money on it right now, I'd put my money on Lawrence to win the Heisman. But uh, Fields has got. With the number of touchdowns Justin Fields is likely to have, um, it is it is a definite possibility. Um, but you're going to have to remind me about that bet because I won't remember it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say it's not a bet at all unless you remind me right before the season starts. So come back. You know, remind me in a comment section or an email or something right before the season starts, and then and we'll we'll make it a bet. Because there's just no way I'll remember that bet that long. Stephen Roberts, thank you for the super chat, sir. I appreciate that. Good morning to you as well, sir. Hope you're doing good this evening. Staying safe. Staying busy. Happy Cinco de Mayo to you and yours. Uh, yeah, happy Cinco de Mayo in that. George with a super chat. Man, you all right, George? Super chatting today, too? 
Thanks, George. Appreciate that, buddy. He says Dan Mullen is a Florida man, which I'm pretty sure everyone already knew. Uh, in fact, I'm positive everyone already knew that. George says uh, Georgia will never beat Florida again. George, George, George. What are we going to do with you, buddy? You're just a glutton for punishment, that's all. Jalen Hurd was better than Alvin Kamara. Right, Fireball? Hey, Fireball. Tell me how much better Jalen Hurd was than Alvin Kamara. Highest drafted UGA player next year? Oh, God. Uh, I think it'll be a defensive guy. They're both in the NFL. Okay, Fromm and Eason are both in the NFL. What, 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 what's your point? I want I want you to tell me how much better Jalen Hurd was than Alvin Kamara since Jalen Hurd started over Alvin Kamara, and that's all that matters to you. That's, that's your proof, so just tell me. Favorite college football games in 2029. Uh, Georgia versus uh, Florida State. Oh, 2019. L uh, last year's season, uh, LSU versus Texas, week two. Uh, Miami and Florida, week zero, doesn't get talked about that much now. But when you look back at it, that was one of the that was one of the most exciting games of the year. I like that one. Uh, the Texas LSU game, that one's obvious. Um, I, but I would probably go. I mean, Texas LSU. I think was the was the game of the year last year. Where's your toilet paper? I messaged you back or emailed you back or whatever uh, on that on, on that about your toilet paper. Iron Bowl was good, too. Yep. I don't think it was as good as Texas LSU. Iron Bowl was probably better than Miami, Florida. You're probably, but I don't I don't think it was better than Texas. Texas LSU was one of the best games I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I know Hurd was no slouch. That's why he started over Alvin Kamara. He was better than Alvin Kamara. That's because he started over Alvin Kamara. What do you think will happen first? Michigan beats Ohio State or USC Junior beats Clemson? Right now, I would say Michigan has a better chance of beating Ohio State. I, I don't think that's happening, so stop with the whole typing thing. I'm not on the Michigan bandwagon again. 
Uh, I, I don't think either of those teams has a chance. I, I don't think Michigan or South Carolina has a chance this year, but I don't see South Carolina getting better. The gap is way bigger between Clemson and South Carolina than it is Michigan and Ohio State. I'm not on that Michigan bandwagon anymore. I jumped off of that thing. I don't think we'll see college football with no fans. I think, I, I don't think you can play college football without fans. I, I hope I'm wrong, but that that that's my thought right now. I think you're either going to see some kind of a season with fans. Or you're not going to see a season. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think there's a way to justify, uh, from a safety standpoint, um, why it's okay to cram a hundred players in a locker room, but it's not okay for me to sit next to somebody else in the bleachers. Uh, when it comes to college football players in particular, the pros pros are a different story because of the things I've. Uh, talk about all the time they get paid they have unions that represent them they have contracts they can negotiate uh, they can bargain for things they have powers that college football kids players don't have so I just would be surprised if they played without fans in the stands although it is a possibility and I would rather have football with no fans than no football at all but uh, be hard to make that happen I think Here's another issue as far as playing without fans in college football. Now, I have not been to nearly as many NFL games as I have college. And I, I, I get it that there are some tailgates at NFL games. I know that. They're nothing on the level of a college football tailgate, though. So, if you hold a game, but you don't sell tickets to the game, what do you do if... 50,000 fans show up to tailgate at the game all over campus. How do you handle that? So I just think there's just a lot of issues around trying to play with no fans. Favorite college football team uniform. I've always liked Penn State's uniforms. I know they're boring and plain. Maybe it's because I'm old, but I've always liked Florida State's um, uniforms. Um, I like Ohio State's black uniforms that they wore last year. I thought those looked uh, good. Maybe I'm a little biased because Georgia does the black and red thing too. Uh, Ohio State, of course, is a different uh, shade of red. But, you know, still, uh, I thought those looked good last year. I'm not a fan of the Oregon thing. Not because I don't think their uniforms look good or that, that they're hideous or anything like that. I, I, it's just become too much of a gimmick with with Oregon. I'm not a fan of what they do with their uniforms, but I like I like Penn State traditional, old school looking uniform. I like Ohio State's black uniforms. Um, what other uniforms look good? Um, oh, I like North Carolina's baby blue uniforms. Uh, I don't know. There's several. I'd, I'd, I'd have to look up. I'd have to look some pictures up or something. There's a podcast devoted specifically to college football uniform. I mentioned a guy called up earlier in the show and asked about po podcasts. I was, everybody's got a podcast these days. There's a podcast specifically devoted to college football uniforms. I've had them on the show before. I don't like Michigan's uniforms. Yeah, I read that the other day that uh, Tennessee is looking at maybe doing some black uniforms again. I don't like anything orange. Uh, 
Noah Sheldon, that's an accurate statement. Florida can't recruit. Specifically, Dan Mullen can't recruit. Fireball with another potato comment. The league MVP. The NFL league MVP last year scored a 13 on the Wonder League. Nobody gives a – there's a reason Einstein didn't play NFL football. Steven Roberts, thank you for the super chat. Again, sir, you can totally have college football without fans. Georgia Tech does it every year. <sighs> I went to the Georgia-Georgia Tech game last year in Atlanta, and it was I'm not ex it was at least 75% Georgia fans. At least. And, and that was a home game for Tech, and it was at least 75% Georgia fans. Is there anybody in the comment section dumber than Fireball that y'all know of, or is he the dumbest one here tonight? I, I, I almost feel like he's playing a game with himself where he's trying to make every single comment dumber than the one he made before, and so far, he's winning. Maybe there's somebody else that's dumber and I just haven't caught enough of their comments yet, but so far... From what I've seen, Fireball is by far the dumbest person in this comment section. Do you think Jimbo Fisher can ever get it done at A&M, or do you think they will always be a 7- or 8-win team? I do not think they will always be a 7- or 8-win team. I think they have the potential to um, to win more. It's, they've been disappointing, really, for a few years. Like I know, you know people talk about how hard their schedule was last year. Yeah, it was hard. They went seven and five. Yeah, oh, yeah. They lost five teams, but they were all top 15 teams. Great. If you want to be a good team, guess what? You got to beat top 15 teams, at least some of them. You didn't beat any of them. I don't know what's going on, but I, I don't think like Texas A&M is just doomed to seven or eight wins max. I just, uh, for whatever reason, they haven't been able to get out of their own way. Oh. <laughs> Fireball says you're an idiot and doesn't know how to spell your. So I, I, I was my assumption was correct. He is the dumbest person in the comment section. You're an idiot, but you misspelled, but you can't even spell. This is amazing. Patrick Mahomes had mo more yards rushing in the Super Bowl than Jake Fromm had in his entire career at UGA. It's not about being a running quarterback. It's about being mobile. It's about the ability to extend plays, escape pressure, roll outside the pocket. Fromm can't do any of those things. It's got nothing to do with being a running what, – what is a running QB anyway? Did the league – I mean, wasn't the league MVP a quote-unquote running QB? last year so you know Lamar Jackson what I mean 
there's plenty of quote unquote running QBs in the NFL. I mean, you have to be able to complete passes to be a quarterback in the NFL. If you're mobile, great. But job number one is complete passes. There's no one in no one in the NFL is looking for a running QB. What did he win? Uh. <laughs> so Brad Johnson is better than Dan Marino, right? Brad Johnson won a Super Bowl. Dan Marino didn't. But what did he win, woo? What did he win? What an idiot. A.J. McCarron won two national titles, right? He's better than Tua. A.J. Mc, AJ McCarron's better than Tua and Jalen Hurts combined. <laughs> oh, Brad Johnson's better than Dan Marino because he won a Super Bowl. Tell him, Fireball. AJ is still in the league. Okay, what's he won? <laughs> what has he won? <laughs> he, he ain't won nothing. <laughs> oh my God, this guy is mentally retarded. Who velcros that kid's shoes for him? I wonder. How old do y'all think he is? He's got to be under eighteen. Nobody, nobody over eighteen is that dumb. Kevin says, I, I know what he hasn't won, a starting job. <laughs> it's homeschooling. And got fireball staying up late, don't it? Spends an hour trying to tell us how great Jake Fromm is. Then spends another hour trying to tell us that, uh... <laughs> that other quarterbacks are no good because they ain't won nothing. <laughs> uh. In 2017, we beat Tennessee 41 to nothing. Jake Fromm had a QBR of like 12 in that game out of 100. <laughs> like, dude couldn't even complete a pass. We still beat him 41 to nothing.
in no universe, no universe, is Fromm better than Justin Fields. And it, it, what did it take two or three games last season for most people to realize that? What would you do with $1 million? <coughs> Pay off my house. Pay off every bill that me and Mrs. Lou have. Start some kind of a, or uh, something for uh, the kids' college. Those would be the first things. BVD, I have a one car per year policy. So you're going to have to wait till next year. A brain tumor joke about a college football player in NASCAR Vol? I'm going to let you think about that for a while and decide uh, if that's really something you want to do here in the future. Uh, Jordan, 24 is the number you're thinking of. Um, as in, Clemson would have to beat Georgia 24 times in a row to tie the series. We've owned you since the beginning of time. Having a pet rock and releasing purple balloons isn't going to change that. I've done that. <coughs> I've done that in the past, Waikiki. Maybe, <coughs> maybe we'll do something like that again. Best lower level football team in Georgia for a long time. It was Georgia Southern, but they're F, uh, they're FBS now. Valdosta State's got some national titles. Uh, hell, Georgia State beat Tennessee. <laughs>
that Clemson Georgia game will be interesting for obvious reasons, but then both teams will be starting new quarterbacks too. So there'll be a, I mean, it's a tough game to pick now. I mean, obviously I'm a Georgia fan and you're a Clemson fan, but I'm uh, like, depending on how this season goes, I don't imagine either team is going to be more than a three point favorite in that game. Yeah, Kennesaw State, they usually end up ranked every year in Division II. Make the playoffs most years. No, I, I can't imagine Lawrence coming back for his senior year. Yeah, I know they're FCS. That's what I said. They make the playoffs. FCS has a playoff, sir. They make the playoffs almost every year. That's what I said. And they end up ranked almost every year. FCS has a poll, too. I'm going to have some fun with that ukulele player y'all have if I had to put money on it right now I would say yes that Carson Beck probably ends up transferring Jabari, if that confused you, then that's a you, you issue. There's no such thing as D1 and D2. But when I say D2, anyone over the age of 25 knows what I mean. Okay, FBS and FCS have only been around for five or ten years. Before that, it was Division One, Division Two, II, Division One AA. So literally everyone knew what I meant. So uh, I apologize for confusing you. Uh, Brock Vandergriff is committed for next year's class. That's uh, that's who you're talking about, um, Arkansas fan. Of course, Clemson could go undefeated. They're going to be a favorite in every game they play in the regular season and the ACC title game. Their toughest game is on the road at Notre Dame in November. They'll probably be a touchdown favorite in that one. Top three for recruiting. I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say the 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 same. All familiar teams, with the exception of maybe Alabama, might not make the top three this year. Uh, I'm going to say Ohio State. Georgia, LSU. 
not necessarily in that order. Um, it looks like Ohio State is the runaway leader right now, but at this time last year, Clemson was the runaway leader, and Georgia finished number one. So a lot can happen uh, with this recruiting, with players committing and decommitting and recommitting and all that kind of stuff. But um, like Tennessee and North Carolina, they're, they're not finishing in the top five. Uh, you know, these teams are in the top five now. I mean, Tennessee's got 13 three-stars. They're not finishing in the top five. Yeah, I like Derek Zire. He loved to sling that ball around. That Will Shipley y'all y'all got to commit from looks like he's nine years old. Uh, Thibodeau to Oregon, I wasn't surprised. It's two years in a row now they've got a beast like that in, uh, in recruiting, a top player like that. Well, Mario Cristobal is one of the best recruiters in all of college football, period, hands down. Yeah, Aaron Murray is my favorite, uh, favorite UGA uh, QB of my lifetime. Season five of Better Call Saul? No, I've not seen that yet. You think Mark Stoops will ever take a job at a big time school? That's uh you know, I'm I'm not sure. Every time there's a white football player, people have people have to make a comparison to some other white guy. We signed that we signed an inside linebacker three classes ago, Nate McBride. The guy's never seen the field, but from the day we signed him, he was gonna be the next Brian Orlacker. <laughs> not Ray Lewis, not Mike Singletary, you know. The next Brian Orlacker. Now this guy Clemson signs is gonna be the next Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, Shockery was fun to watch, too. I liked him a lot, too. Yeah, I know Roundtree. His dad's the sheriff here. Uh, Bobby Petrino is human garbage. He's in Urban Meyer territory. Urban Meyer, Bobby Petrino, Hugh Freeze, the Mount Rushmore of college football human garbage. Do you think Stanford would have made the playoffs in 2015 if we hadn't lost to Oregon State at home? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I don't remember how the 2015 season ended. I, like, I don't remember who was ranked fifth and sixth in that back in 2015. Uh, that was a rough year for me. It was Mark Ricks last year. Uh, I was way. I was very busy uh, getting Mark Rick fired at the end of the 2015 season uh, and didn't have time. I wasn't really paying attention to much else, to be honest with you. I made it my mission in life to get Mark Rick fired. If 
favorite non-UGA player in the NFL? I like Saquon Barkley. Uh, who else do I like watching in the NFL? Tyreek Hill's fun to watch. Uh, bu- 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 bu. Who else is fun to watch in the NFL? You think Mark Rick will ever take another job? Coaching? Head? No. Head coaching? No. I think he's done coaching. Uh, I mean, Bobby Petrino is a better head coach than what you've had lately, you know, but. Could he bring your program back up, up to where? Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I would be, I would be shocked if Arkansas went down that road again. I just can't see that happening. Yeah, Lamar Jackson, fun to watch. Who's better, Dooley or Smart? Vince Dooley? Well, right now it's Vince Dooley. What do he win? Five or six SEC titles, something like that? A national title? Three SEC titles in a row at one point? Um, Vince Dooley solely responsible for the death of Bear Bryant? I mean, so, yeah, he, he's up there. That's right, George. That's but that same team that lost to South Carolina beat you. Do I hate the ref? I don't hate the refs. I think they do the best job they can. Uh, my issue is with the fact that we still use part-time referees. It just makes no sense. The NFL does it too. I don't understand. All this money that's being made, and they can't hire full-time referees. It's absolutely insane. Uh, these referees should not be traveling on Friday evenings uh, to referee a game on the weekends just so they can go back and sell insurance all week on Monday. They, these officials should be full-time officials. They should be refereeing on the weekend. They should be learning how to referee during the week, whatever, whatever. But they, they should, they, you need full-time officials. I think the referees do the best job they can. Um, it's just not always that good of a job. The NFL especially, how do they justify not having full-time officials? I mean, that's just insane. I mean, everybody loves to yell at the referees because it's fun, but, I mean, I don't I don't necessarily hate the referees for any particular reason. I, I think they do the best job they can. I just don't think it's a very good job. Who 
would I rather have, McIlwain or Mullen? Hmm. Would I rather have a guy that wins his division 66% of the time, or would I rather have a guy that's 0 for 10 in winning a division? Hmm. Syrup maker, thank you for the super chat, sir. George is beating Fireball for dumb comments. Oh, it's, okay, well, I'm going to start keeping an eye on it then because Fireball was running away with it earlier. Uh, he was looking like the grand champion for dumb comments, but I'm going to have to keep an eye. You say George is catching up with him now. Uh, I'm going to have to start coming up with some sort of tally or keep score some kind of way or something. Somebody needs to teach NASCAR ball how to troll. Uh, yeah, Gus Malzahn would be an upgrade over anything Arkansas has had in a while. <clears throat> He's from there, too. But, I mean, of course, uh, threatening to go to Arkansas is what got him that $50 million contract. That's why Auburn paid him that money. They, they were afraid he was headed to Arkansas. And now they're stuck with him, Gus Malzahn. think Jared Goff could reach the level of Aaron Rodgers no and I mean and I like Jared Goff but I don't think he's uh, I would put Aaron Rodgers a tier ahead of him I, I would not replace Kirby Smart with Nick Saban if I could do it tomorrow, I would not do it. Anybody that would uh, needs to think a little bit longer about their answer before they do it. Uh, no, uh, Georgia is the only state I've ever lived in. Yeah, Saban's the greatest coach of all time, but you, you have to think real hard about wanting to trade. I mean, how many more years does Saban have? Not not many. So, you know, like if you're somebody that's got a young coach that's had a lot of success and, and is still young, you're probably better off keeping that coach than trading for Nick Saban, even though Nick Saban is better right now. Like, Take Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley, for example. 
I promise you Oklahoma's perfectly happy with Lincoln Riley. They wouldn't trade Lincoln Riley for Nick Saban now. Not that Nick Saban's not better than Lincoln Riley, but Lincoln Riley's 40 years old. Ryan Day is 40 years old at Ohio State. Kirby Smart is whatever he is, 40. How old is Kirby Smart? 45? How old he is. So if you have a young coach that you're happy with, you'd be you'd have to think long and hard about trading him for saving because you're not going to get very many years out of that deal. It would be like trading um uh let me see here. Uh who's the best young quarterback in the NFL? Is it Lamar Jackson? Would you trade Lamar Jackson for Tom Brady? Uh, I think a great coach is a great fit. I don't think it – this – trying to find a – I don't think there's very many jobs that require a certain fit as a head coach. I, a, a great coach is going to have success almost anywhere he goes within reason. So I, I don't know about, like, who would be a great fit for Arkansas. Um, I think it's – it. W- what Arkansas did was very strange. Um, you know, you, you very rarely see somebody go from position, position coach to head coach, especially a position coach to then jump straight to head coach in the SEC. Uh, you, you just rarely see that. Doesn't mean that um, Pittman won't be any good. It's just we don't have a lot of other examples of that. It's usually a coordinator making that jump. I think I played Final Fantasy when I was a kid or something because uh, I recognize that game, but no, I, I don't play that. I think it was a video game, but no, I don't, I don't play that. Um, I, I didn't like the South Carolina hire of Muschamp from the beginning. I, I just, uh, you know, it, it's to me, it's just hard to justify hiring a new head coach is always a risk, right? But it, it just, it's hard to justify to me hiring someone who has been a head coach and never been successful at it. Now, it's one thing if a guy is good somewhere and then maybe struggles somewhere else and then he's good again. He finds – but, like, he he was just terrible at Florida. Uh, so I just was surprised that he got his – I was surprised that his next head coaching job was in the SEC, Another even another Power Five. I thought he may have to do, like, what Lane Kiffin did. If you guys remember, you know, he, he – sort of crashed and burned was a coordinator for a while then got a head coach at a you know as a group of five and now he's getting another chance in the power five i was kind of surprised um that south carolina did that and it hasn't worked out he's what's his record at carolina 36 and 35 i think something like that
20, oh, uh, no, that's too many games. 26 and 25, maybe. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. Ole Miss got the best recruits when Hugh Freeze was there and they were buying them. Do you dislike any sports YouTubers? Uh, yes. Shout out to LaGrange, Georgia. Wee! Danny D Rock Mahaffey. I'm sure I said that wrong, but, uh, not my fault. I'm not, I didn't come up with that name. It's not my job to name you. It's just my job to try to pronounce it wrong. But shout out to D Rock in LaGrange, Georgia. What did you? More success in the SEC, Kiffin or Leach? Oh, man. You know, I think I'm going to go with Kiffin. I think Felipe Franks will do okay. He's got, you know, you know who Felipe Franks reminds me of in the SEC right now? Kellen Mond. Has some ability, has some skill, can make some throws, can run around a little, but very inconsistent. Very inconsistent. Will come out one week and frustrate you to death. Will come out the next week and look like an All American. Very inconsistent. And I don't think changing schools and offenses and all that is going to do anything to help his consistency. So I still think he's a decent quarterback, but and Florida fans will probably agree, there were some games where he was a hero, and then there were some games where they would boo him off the field. He's just he he was very inconsistent. A, a lot kind of, really a lot like Kellen Mond. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, D-Rock. No problem, buddy. Oh, I think Bryce Young will do great. I don't think he'll start. I think he'll play a lot, though, and it wouldn't... My, I think... Uh, I think Mac Jones starts, but I think Bryce Young will be the starter... By the time the season ends, I think I think I think Mac Jones will start Game One. I think Bryce Young will start the Iron Bowl. At what point in between there Bryce Young takes over, I don't know, but I think Bryce Young will be the starter at some point during the season. Given we have a regular normal season, almost everything we talk about and discuss, any predictions we make, anything like that, almost all of that goes out the window immediately if the season is altered in, in any way. Any changes they make to the season is going to have some effect 
big or small or somewhere in between on any team you try to look at, forecast, and predict. Um, so, all right, Arkansas fan, we'll see you next time, buddy. Uh, Mac Jones is way better than Jack Fromm. Uh, based on what? Be basing that on. Uh, I would argue that uh, last year in particular, Mac Jones had much better weapons around him uh, than Fromm did. Fromm did not throw multiple pick sixes to the barn and lose. Mac Jones did. That one's probably close. Fromm and Mac Jones is probably close. Do you think that South Carolina should have stayed in the ACC? Um, I mean, that's a hard question to answer. I mean, if you look at it right now, clearly South Carolina right now, today, would be better in the ACC than they are in the SEC. It, they, they would have a better record in most years right now in the ACC than they would the SEC. But so much has happened between the time they left the ACC and now it's hard to go back that far in time and say should they have done something different. Because uh, they were independent for a while. After, right after they left the ACC, I believe they were independent for a long time and then joined the SEC, if I'm remembering that right. I could be wrong. Maybe a Clemson fan, if there's still some in here, will know better than I would on that. But it seems like, if I remember right, South Carolina was independent for a, a while after they um, left the ACC. Maybe I'm wrong. Nebraska was disappointing to me last year. I was I was way too high on Nebraska last offseason. I picked them to win the West in the Big Ten. That's how off I was on Nebraska. Now, I didn't give them any chance to win the Big Ten, but I did pick them to win that side of the division. I thought I was a believer in um, – uh, shoot, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the quarterback's name, Adrian Martinez. I was a believer in him. I thought he was going to take a huge step forward in year two under Scott Frost. I thought the defense would be nowhere near good enough, but I thought it would be a lot better than it was the year before, and it was just an utter disappointment to me for Nebraska. I don't know if I got suckered in by the whole year two Scott Frost thing or if I was higher on Adrian Martinez than I should have been. I don't know what it was, but I, to me – Nebraska was one of the most disappointing teams last year. What's your opinion on Hurts as a quarterback? I personally don't think he's great. Um, I don't either. He's um, – I, I just uh, – I, I, he doesn't do it for me with his arm. And in, and in the NFL in particular, at the end of the day, you got to be able to throw the ball in the NFL. You have uh, – the, the runaround thing is great if you can do that. That's obviously great. And teams would – there ain't a team in the NFL – that wouldn't take a quarterback that can move around if he's an elite, also an elite thrower of the football. I still think in the NFL especially, the ability to throw the ball is the most important ability you you, you need to play the quarterback position. I know things are changing and, you know, you got the zone options and zone reads and all this kind of stuff, but I still think at the end of the day you got to be able to be an elite passer of the football, and I just don't think Jalen Hurts is that. All right, D-Rock. 
Oh, you're a Clemson Tater, huh? All right, Tater. Shout out to uh, shout out to the Tater in Lagrange, D Rock. Are you getting a PlayStation Five? Uh, well, my son is. How many COVID deaths in Georgia? You know what? I haven't looked up the number in a couple of days. Let me look it up. We were in we were in twelfth place. Uh here we go. USA. Georgia. Uh, 1,295. Yeah, 1,295. Yeah, I like Sam Howe. He's on some Heisman lists. I, I don't. He's not going to win it. I don't see that happening. But p point is, there's a lot of people that are paying attention to Sam Howell this off season uh, after the year he had last year as a true freshman uh, at North Carolina. Mac Brown year one. They have a tougher schedule this year, though. I think, and especially if you look at their some of their road games. Um, I think they have the potential to be the second best team in the ACC, but they may not finish with the second best record in the ACC. Chase Bryce at Duke, yeah. Uh, transfer from the Taters. What does it take for Georgia Tech to make a comeback? Uh, about three more recruiting classes. I mean, it's it's just almost not fair to take a team that's been running the triple option for 10 years and then expect them to be able to run a pro-style offense right away. It just was never going to happen. Uh, they just don't have the players there um, to, to run it, uh, and that was obvious last year. And then even as they start to get some of those players in over the first year or two, you're not going to have the depth that you need. So, you know, you're constantly going to be one injury away at every single position from then having to play somebody who's got no business playing. So it's going to be another two or three years at least before Georgia Tech becomes competitive overall, um, I think. Not that that doesn't mean they can't win a game here and there. Of course they will. Uh, but in terms of getting back to anything close to being ranked or anything like that or a couple of years, a couple of good recruiting classes away still. You, you, they got to turn that entire roster over. Uh, and, of course, it takes four years to do that. Miami will never be back. If you look at the four or five, I mean, when you start talking about teams who are really down and have been really good in recent memory, so the last 20 to 30 years, you know, Florida State, Miami, Michigan, Nebraska, Southern Cal, Miami is the least likely of all those teams to, quote, unquote, be back. Uh, I'm not high on Miami at all right now. I think they're in for another five or ten years of misery at least. They blew a prime opportunity when Flor with Florida State being in the toilet from Willie Taggart 
Miami has blown a prime opportunity to become that next team that's there if and when Clemson stumbles, you know? Like, it seems like every year people pick Alabama to win the SEC, right, for good reason. So if you're in the SEC and Nick Saban's at Alabama, I mean, people don't want to admit it, but the best you can hope for is that the year that Alabama screws it up and doesn't win the SEC, you have to hope that you're that team that's there in line to do it instead. So, you know, Miami should should have become that team in the ACC over the last three to four years, and they didn't do it, and they just blew their opportunity. And now, right now in the ACC, there's no difference between Miami, North Carolina, Duke, Georgia Tech, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Boston College, Wake Forest. They're all five and six win teams talent-wise. They just are not close. They are not. Miami is not close. Oh, we have a home and home with Oklahoma, too, and I really hate how they did it, but we play at Oklahoma like in 2023 or something. Then they don't play in Athens till like 2031. Like we have a home and home, but the games are scheduled like eight years apart. And college football just changes so much over any 10-year period. I can't imagine that that game, Georgia at uh, or Oklahoma at Georgia, ever gets played. So we'll end up probably playing in Norman, but by the time it comes around for Oklahoma to come to Athens, you know, they could have playoff expansion or conference realignments or so many different things could happen uh, that, that, could, that could make it where that game isn't played. I, I don't understand the point of making a home and home eight years apart. It just doesn't make any sense to me. If the schedule didn't allow a home and home to be scheduled in back-to-back -back years, then it shouldn't have been scheduled or at most one year in between, like Georgia did the thing with Notre Dame in 17 and 19. Okay, fine. But trying to spread these things out over eight or nine years, the way college football is changing and set to change even more here in the near future, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me to schedule a home and home eight, nine years apart. Yeah, y'all's might not get played either, NASCAR Vol, because uh, you know the, the current TV contracts expire in 2023, and I would not be surprised at all if uh, in 2023 when they redo the TV contracts that the playoffs expand to eight games or something. And when that happens, there's going to be a lot of other changes, I think, that go along with that. You may see conference championship games go away. Um, I don't know. You may, you may see a lot of things get different when that happens. And, and some schedules may change. How many perfect seasons does Florida have, George? How many, George? How many perfect seasons? How many perfect seasons does Florida have? That's tonight's trivia question. Florida's been playing football for 125 years. In those 125 years, how many perfect seasons does Florida have? I'm waiting, George. Tell me the answer, George. Type for me. Type for me, George. Type for me, George. George. Type for me. How many perfect seasons out of 125 football seasons, George? How many perfect seasons? How many perfect seasons does Florida have? 
George, type for me, buddy. Type me the answer, George. George. Type for me, George. Type, 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 type. Type for me, George. Which is greater? Okay, let's try a different question, George. Which is greater? Okay, this is an easy one. Which is greater? The number of perfect seasons that Florida has or the number of division titles that Dan Mullen has? Which is greater? Tell me, George. Type for me, George. Type for me. Which is greater, George? Which is greater? The number of perfect seasons Florida has out of playing football for 125 years or the number of division titles that Dan Mullen has after being a head coach in the SEC for a decade? Which is greater? George? Type for me, George. For me, what happened, George? Better get those fingers bandaged up, buddy. Get those fingers bandaged up, dude. Get those fingers looked at. Get those fingers looked at. Balls have six natties. Yale has 27 natties. They're as relevant as Tennessee is now. If you're trying to convince people that Tennessee used to be good, we believe you. We know that. We know Tennessee used to be good. It just was a long time ago. NASCAR Vol and Fire Vol. Neither of those two people were alive the last time Tennessee even won the conference. Okay. Tennessee hasn't even won their conference in 22 years. 22 years. But six natties, though. Yale's got 27, though. So Yale's got 27. Tennessee has six. That means Yale is better than Tennessee. Is that what you're saying? Because you're saying Tennessee has six natties to, to somehow... I, I don't know what kind of... This is like locking a retard in a circular room and telling him to find a corner... I don't know what you're trying to – six natties and Georgia's got two and Florida's got three or whatever it is. I don't know. So what does that mean – so so does that mean Yale is better than Tennessee? What am I not understanding? NASCAR ball and fireball, neither were alive the last time Tennessee even won their conference. Uh, neither was potty trained the last time Tennessee won their division. So I'm not sure which way we're headed here. Florida is greater than Georgia. Well, let's see. Georgia owns the all-time series. Georgia's currently on a three-game winning streak. Have way more SEC titles. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah you, 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 clearly you're just wrong there. Not 12 years, NASCAR ball. Not 12 years. 22. Okay. You can't spend all your free time saying Georgia hasn't been any good in, since 1980 
and then act like Tennessee was somehow good t- in 2008. I mean, how were you good in 2008 if Georgia hasn't been good since 1980? Uh, y- you would have a hard time explaining that, buddy. Type for me, George. George. George, type zero for me in the comment section. George, can I get a zero in the comment section from you, buddy? George. I am your father. Can I get a zero comment section from you, George? Come on, buddy. Okay. Bone broth. People are dying every day. And you clicked on a college football YouTube video? What the hell is wrong with you, man? You ought to be ashamed of yourself, bone broth. There's people dying in the street from this coronavirus. And you're sitting around watching college football YouTube videos. You ought to be ashamed. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Penn State will win the Big Ten. Penn State's going to be real good this year. I don't know if they'll win the Big Ten, but they're going to be real good. Who timed the real USC out? Oh, come on. Who timed him out? I know him, and he hadn't been around in a, in a while, and y'all done timed him out. Yeah, that Penn State-Iowa game was a good one last year. This man asked George if he works at a potato factory. (laughs) Never mind the fact that potatoes grow in the dirt. They're not made in a factory. Never mind that. He asked this man, George, if he works at a potato factory. Ohio State's an SEC caliber team until they play an SEC team. We hear this all the time. A potato factory is where they build potatoes. (laughs)
Who's record against the SEC? Ohio State, five and twelve all time, two and eleven in bowl games. Penn State is lucky to even be in a man. I shoot. Penn State is no joke in 2020. I can tell you that, and they probably have the best defensive player in the Big Ten. Yeah, the last time you played an SEC team, you won. That's one of the five wins you have all time against the SEC. You're five and twelve. What's for dinner? It's one in the morning. All right, I'm going to get off of here. Get me some sleep. Appreciate y'all hanging out with me tonight. Canceling these Wednesday shows made it where I can uh, hang out with you guys a little longer on Tuesdays now, maybe. <clears throat> I don't have to worry about doing the shows. Uh, or the uh, the uh, show on Wednesday morning. So, anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I do appreciate you guys tuning in. It was a good time tonight. Uh, what's today? Tuesday. So this show will be back Thursday night at 10. Call in show. Morning show Thursday and Friday morning at 8 a.m. It's technically not Cinco de Mayo anymore, so I don't know if, I don't know if this is the right move. Yeah, what the hell. I'll see y'all next time. <laughs>